What's happening guys? Welcome to part two in the series on facial recognition using a Siamese neural network where we try to implement the code from an existing deep learning research paper. And in this particular case, we're going to be doing facial recognition for facial verification. So ideally we'll be able to use a webcam or a camera to be able to verify ourselves inside of an application. Let's take a deeper look as to what we'll be going through in this tutorial. Alrighty, so in part two, what we're going to be doing is we're going to focus on getting our data. Now, remember from part one, what we needed was three different types of data. So we needed our negative images, we needed our anchor images, and we needed our positive images. So in order to collect our negative images, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be leveraging a standard image repository or facial image repository called labeled faces in the wild. So we'll be able to download that and unpack it and get it into the structure that we need for our model. We're also going to collect our anchor images and our positive images. Now, in this particular case, we're going to be using OpenCV to do that using a webcam. But if you've already got some images of yourself, say, for example, you've collected them using your phone, you can definitely use those as well. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, so in this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is collecting our data sets from the labeled faces in the wild data set. And then we're also going to be collecting our positive and our anchor classes. So this basically means that we're going to have all the data that we need to at least go on ahead and train our model. Now, before we get into it, I wanted to sort of explain a little bit more as to or, or how we're going to actually be using these data sets. So let's actually take a look at how this is all going to work now as i mentioned before we're going to have a positive data set and we're also going to have a or we're going to have positive examples negative examples and anchor examples so i wanted to sort of visualize how this is actually going to work so let's take a look at our first positive or our positive examples first so say for example we have an input image well that's a little bit thin let's make that a bit bigger so we've got an input image so uh, imagine this is coming from our webcam. Move this out of the way. Webcam. And then what we're going to have is a positive image. So positive. When we actually go and build our model, what we're going to do is we're going to pass this or pass both of these images to an embedding model or an encoding model is probably a better term. And these models that you can see here, so let me change the color so it's a little bit uh, better to see. So this model is effectively going to be our encoding model. So it's going to convert our webcam or our anchor representation. So this webcam data is our anchor. So we're going to convert that model encoding to a data representation. And then when we actually go and build our model, what we're actually going to be doing is trying to determine the difference between our anchor and our positive. So this layer that we're going to implement over here is actually going to be a distance layer. So think of it as going, all right, so we're going and converting our input images to a embedding or an encoding. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try to see how similar they are. And if they are very similar, then what our model is going to do is it's going to output a one to basically say we are verified. Which is effectively saying that the person inside of our positive image is the same person inside of our anchor image, right? So these are all going to be connected. Now, the cool thing about using this particular type of model is that if you wanted to go and implement this on other people, then you definitely could. All you would need to do is pass through a different positive image and pass through the same anchor image or pass through a different anchor image, and it will be able to verify against a whole range of people. Now, in our particular case, we're going to be doing it against one person, but that's perfectly fine. Now, let's take a look at a negative class, right? So I'm going to do this one in blue. So again, actually, let's do it in the same color. So we're again going to have our anchor image. Right. And this could be from your webcam. It could be an image from your phone. It's really going to be what we're passing through as our input to effectively perform our verification. Then we're also going to have our negative example. And again, we're going to be using this same embedding layer or the same embedding model or encoding model, whatever you want to call it. 
and we're going to be passing these images through so these models that you see here or this model is the same across the board i'll actually draw it uh make it a nicer orange that's nice all right so this everything that you see here that is going to be the same model so effectively what that model is going to learn how to do is how to best represent the input images to be able to ensure that when we actually go and perform our similarity analysis that we're actually accurately classifying them as either positive or they match or they don't match as in negative so when we go and pass through our anchor and our negative what's actually going to happen is when we pass this through to our distance layer our distance layer is going to say hey not the same the same and it's going to output a zero so which means that we are unverified so i figured i'd give a little bit of a visual representation of what we're building because sometimes i think it's very easy to get lost as to how these neural network models work but basically this is in a nutshell how this neural network is going to be built up so what we're actually going to be doing in this tutorial is we're going to be focused on collecting our data so this one's going to be so we're going to be collecting our anchors which are there we're going to be collecting our positives which are there and we're also going to be collecting our negatives now in our particular case our anchors are going to come from our webcam so we're going to do that using open cv and our positives are going to come from our webcam as well web not wed uh, and our negative data is going to come from the labeled faces in the wild data set so this is an open source data set that actually has a whole bunch of different faces so that in a nutshell is what we're going to be doing today we're going to be focused on all of the stuff in i don't know what do you call this color aqua we're going to be doing that so we're going to be collecting that data Alrighty, so let's actually get back to it and do some coding so first up what we're going to be doing is we're going to be collecting our labeled faces in the wild and then we're going to collect our positive and anchor classes so let's go on ahead and do this now in order to get our labeled faces in the wild data set you can actually go to this link here so let me actually copy this so you can see it so it is http colon forward slash forward slash viz dash www.cs.umass.edu forward slash lfw forward slash so this is actually going i'll actually link to this in the description below so you can pick that up as well so don't stress if you haven't picked it up now as per usual all the code that we write inside of this tutorial is going to be available via github so if you want to pick that up you definitely can and i'm actually structuring the code so you can see what we've written after tutorial one or part one of this series what we've done after part two so you'll actually be able to see progression okay but for now what we need to do is get our labeled faces in the wild data set so if we go to this link what you'll actually see is that right over here we've got this link called download so we're going to hit download and then there's a whole bunch of information here so we've got uh what do we have so we've got all images as gzip tar file all images aligned with deep funneling all images aligned with funneling all images aligned with commercial face alignment software so there's a whole bunch but what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to be using this one here so all images as a gzip tar file so let's hit that and this should start downloading so it's about 172 173 megabytes so once you've got that we'll be able to untire it and start working with it inside of python so let's give that a second to download Alrighty, so that is our data set now downloaded so what we're going to do is we're going to open that up inside of its folder oh, let's zoom out a little all right so you can see that that's downloaded so i'm just going to cut that and paste it into the same folder that we're currently working in so i am currently inside of my d drive inside of youtube and inside of our face id folder so i'm just going to paste that there so once you've gone and downloaded it put it or once you've gone and downloaded that data set grab it and put it inside of the same folder as your jupyter notebook is in so if you're doing this in colab just make sure it's in the same folder as your jupyter notebook so you can see that that is our jupyter notebook that we're working on at the moment 
that is our data set. So lfw.tgz. Cool. Alrighty. So what we now need to do is we now need to uncompress that. So it's a tar gz file. So you can see it's tgz. So we need to uncompress that. So we can go on ahead and do that inside of our notebook. So I'm just going to add a comment, uncompress tar gz. What is it? Labeled faces in the wild data set. All right, so we're going to, let's do it. Okay, so that is the command to uncompress and extract our data set. So I've written exclamation mark, tar, and then there's a space, dash xf, and then there's a space, and then there's the name of the file. So this command here is what's actually going to allow us to extract our data set and put it inside of the same repository or the same place that it currently is. This is actually just passing through the actual name of the data set. So if, say for example, in the future, the name of the data set from labeled faces in the wild changes, you're going to want to change this component here. So if we run this now, all things holding equal, this should uncompress and we should be able to see our data set. Okay, so that's finished running. So you can see that we no longer have an asterisk over here. So if we actually go and open up our data set again, I don't know why I closed the folder. That's cool. You can see that that's now been uncompressed. So we've got this folder here called LFW and we have a ton of images. So you can see that it's actually labeled by person's name. Now we don't, we're not actually really concerned with the person's name in this particular case, because we're going to be using all of these for negatives. But if you wanted to do um, a different form of facial verification, so say, for example, you wanted to add triplet loss, you could definitely do this and add pairs of images for different people. In our particular case, we're very much focused on the one person that we want to verify. So what we need to do is we need to take all of these images. So if you actually open up these folders, there's multiple pictures of people right? Heaps of people. List keeps going. What we want to do is we want to take these images inside of the labeled faces in the wild folder and inside of these subsequent folders. And we want to put it inside of the folders that we created in part one of this tutorial. So if you go into the data folder that we created earlier, we want to move all of those images from the labeled faces in the wild data set and put it inside of this negative folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to write the Python code to go on ahead and do that. So this is effectively going to put all of our data in the same place and follow the same structure. So let's go on ahead and do it. So we're going to, I'm just going to add a comment. So move LFW images to the following repository. So it's going to be data and then forward slash negative. All right. So let's go on ahead and write that code. Okay, so that is our code to move our data from the LFW folders and the subdirectories into our negative folder. Now, the key thing that I just realized is that I haven't actually gone and run the code that we had in our initial tutorial. So if I go and run this again, so let's actually take a look at what we've written first and then we're going to go and run our imports and stuff. So I haven't actually gone and run the initial steps. My bad, that's fine. Um, so if I actually go and run this now, we're going to get a whole bunch of errors. If I run this, you can see it's saying name OS is not defined. Perfectly fine. We'll solve that in a second. So first up, what we're doing is we're looping through every single directory inside of our labeled folders in the wild repository or directory. Then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through every single file inside of those subdirectories. So we're effectively saying, go into our, do, 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 where are we? So face ID. So go into this folder and then go into this folder and loop through each of these images because in some particular cases, there's multiple images of people. So you can see in that case, we've got multiple images. So we need to move each image into its new folder. So in order to do that, we first up define the existing path. So I've written X underscore path in caps and I've set that equal to os.path.join 
and then we've passed through LFW, which is the main directory or the root directory, pass through the directory that we've extracted from here, because remember we're looping through them, and then pass through the file name that we're getting from here. Then we're specifying the new path name. So I've written new underscore path in all caps, and I've set that equal to os.path.join. And then we're passing through our negative path, which is from our previous tutorial, which we defined over here. And we're passing through our file name. So this is going to effectively join our negative path and our file name. And then we're going to use os.replace and we're going to pass through our existing path and our new path. So this is going to grab it from our existing path and move it to our new path. But as of right now, this isn't going to run because we haven't run our import. So I'm going to go right up to 1.2 run this so that's going to import open cv os random numpy matplotlib then we'll import our tensorflow dependencies not that i think we'll need them now and then we're just going to run uh, the code under 1.3 and we're going to run the code under 1.4 so that's going to define our different paths so our positive path our negative path and our anchor path Okay, now if we go and run this, all things holding equal, let me actually just show you quickly how this actually works. So if I write os.list here, lfw, so this actually returns all the subsequent folders inside of the lfw directory. Now, if I loop through those, so for directory in os.list here, what's going to happen is I'm going to be able to access each directory. So if I write for file in os.list here, uh, and this should be os.path.join. I've actually written, got an error there. So os. Let me actually run it without changing it and we'll see what happens. So if I run lfw and then directory, that's going to throw an error. So this should actually be os.path.join because right now I'm not joining those directories together. So if I change that here as well, os.path.join. And then if I print a uh, file, this is going to print out every single image. So now if I actually join these together, so os.path.join, and if we pass through lfw, so os.path.join just joins directory names together. So it gives us a full path. So if I pass through lfw and then directory and then file, and then close that, this is going to give us the full path to every single image, right? So that is exactly what we're doing to get our existing path. Then what we're doing is we're defining the new path. So we're going to do os.path.join and we are going to be passing through our negative path and our file. All right, so we're effectively going to be grabbing this image and then moving it into data and then negative and then Aaron Eckhart. And so effectively it's the same name. So we're grabbing this and moving it to here. We're doing this, we're moving it to here. So we're just going to loop through and do this for every single image. So if I delete that, we don't need that anymore. And I actually go on ahead and run this. This is actually going to move all of our images from those existing stacked directories into our negative path. And that is done. So it ran reasonably quickly. So if we go into that folder now and go into D drive, YouTube, Face ID. And if we go into, let me zoom in on this, data and then negative. You can see we've got all of our negative images there. Pretty good, right? Now, I don't think we're going to use all these images for training, but you sort of get the idea. We've got plenty to work with if we need to. So what's happening now? So we can actually close this. So what we just went and did there, so if we go into our LFW folder, and you can see that each one of these are now empty because we've actually gone and moved them into our new folder. So what we can actually do is delete this LFW folder. There's nothing in it, we can get rid of it now. So if we delete that, we are all good. Cool. So that is step 2.1 now done. So we've gone and uncompressed our label faces in the wild data set. And we have also gone and moved all of those images from the LFW directories into our negative path, which we defined up here from the first episode in this series. Cool. So what's next is that we need to actually go and collect our positive and our anchor classes. Now for this, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using OpenCV to access our webcam and we're going to collect those images down and save them down. 
Now, the size of the images that we're actually going to be collecting are going to be 250 pixels by 250 pixels. So by default, when we use our webcam, your image resolution might be a little bit different. So what we actually want to do is we want to ensure that we're collecting images of that size because I believe the sizes from the LFW data set are going to be in that same size as well. So let me just double check that. So if we go into data and then negative, and if I go and open one of these so properties and details, yeah, so you can see they're 250 by 250 and I can check another. And again, 250 by 250. So to make our lives a little bit easier, we're just going to ensure that we collect the same or images of the exact same dimensions when we collect our anchor and our positives. This is going to make your data processing a whole bunch easier when it comes to training the model. All right, cool. So that is good. So what we now need to do is do exactly that. So we're going to be using a pretty standard OpenCV loop to be able to go and collect this with a few tweaks to make our lives a little bit easier. But first up, what we need to do is ensure we can access our webcam and do that successfully. So let's go on ahead and do that. Okay, so that is the first part of our video capture code or image capture code now done. So I've gone and written one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different lines of code there. So this is, if you've watched any of my computer vision tutorials, this is going to look super familiar to you. So let's actually comment through this. So first up, what we do is we establish a connection to the webcam. And that is exactly what this line is doing here. So I've written cap equals cv2 dot video capture. And then I've passed through a video capture device. Now, I think it's going to be video capture device three, but it might be a little bit different because I've gone and installed some new stuff on my PC, but we'll see. And then I've written, so I've actually, I think it's actually because I'm actually doing the whiteboarding now, but, and let me know what you guys thought of that. I'm, uh, I'm testing that out. We'll see if it picks up or if you guys enjoy it. If you don't, let me know and I'll stop doing it. So once we've established our connection to the webcam, I've then written while cap is open. So this is going to loop through every single frame in our webcam. And then we're using cap.read to actually read that capture at a point in time. And then what we do is we actually unpack the results that we get from that method there. So we unpack it and get a return value and the actual frame. So this frame is the actual image. Then what we're doing is we're rendering that image back to the screen. So it just makes it a little bit easier to actually see what we're doing. So we've written cv2.imshow. So let me add some comments here. So show image back to screen. So cv2.imshow. And then we're naming what we want our frame to be named. So in this case, I've written image collection. You can name it whatever you want. And then we've gone and passed through our frame, which is what we got from over here. So this is effectively going to be showing the feed from our webcam on our screen inside of Python or inside of a CV2 frame. And then everything from here on out is to do with breaking gracefully. So what we've written is if CV2 dot wait key one, so this is going to wait, I believe it's one millisecond. So CV2 dot wait key. Uh, so it says delay. What is it? Uh, this function. Yeah. So it's in milliseconds. So, it's going to wait one millisecond and it's also going to check what key we've actually pressed. So this is actually unpacking what is being pressed from our keyboard. So then we've written end zero XFF equals odd Q or equals equals. So it's check. It's doing a comparison check. This is really important because we're going to use this a little bit more in a second. So when we hit Q on our keyboard, this should close down our frame. But what we're also going to do in a second is we're actually going to configure some other ones so that when we hit a, it's going to collect an anchor. And when we hit P, it's going to collect a positive image. And I think we're going to collect roughly, uh, roughly 300 ish images. Doesn't matter. We'll see. I think 300 is probably a good, good starting point. 
Okay, so that is doing that check. And then if that check is passed, so if it waits a millisecond and we hit Q on our keyboard, then it is going to break out of this loop up here. And then it's actually going to release our webcam. So let's actually comment this for once. Uh, release the webcam. And then it's going to destroy uh, or close the image show frame. So if ever you are using OpenCV and you're accessing your webcam and stuff is just freezing up, it's not working, what you can actually do is run cap.release to release your webcam and then cv2.destroy all windows to actually close everything down and re-kick things off. So if this number up here is incorrect and it all locks up and freezes up, what we'll do is we'll stop this cell from running and then we'll run these two commands down here to be able to release whatever webcam we're trying to access and then destroy all those windows. So that is our image collect. Oh, well, that is our webcam code now set up. We haven't actually done any image collection yet. So if we go and test this out, let's see if that works. So if that does run successfully, you'll get a little pop up. All right. So that has not run successfully. So this error is a common error that I always get asked about. So error OpenCV 4.5.3, blah, 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 blah source.empty in function. So this basically means this here, super important. Let me zoom in on that. That basically means that it's not able to access the webcam. So what, whatever we're getting back from that webcam device or that image device is empty, which means that we don't have the right webcam number up here. So what we want to try to do is try a different uh, webcam number. So let's try four. That might work a little bit better. All right, so that's work. So you can see that I've got this little pop-up and you can see our feed. All right, so sometimes you're gonna have to tweak that, right? So, and this is, it's great that I'm showing you this because it'll actually show you how to resolve that error. So all we did there is we changed our video capture device from three to four. And you can see that I've now got the right video capture device. So I can see myself in the screen and you can see up there that it says image collection. So that image collection label is coming from over here. So if we wanted to change that, you definitely could. Okay, so the key thing now is that this video frame that we're currently looking at is not in the dimensions of 250 by 250 pixels. So if I quit out of this, and remember if we hit Q, so this section of code is going to trigger. So let me actually show you this. So if I hit Q on my keyboard, you can see it shuts it down. What was I gonna say now? Next, okay, so the frame, so the frame dimension. So if we actually take a look at frame, so the nice thing about this loop is that you're going to be able to access the last set of variables that are being captured. So if we actually take a look at frame, this is our image. And if I run, uh, this was the advantage of using matplotlib. So if I type plot.imshow, you can see that that's our image there. Ignore the coloring. That's because OpenCV has a slightly different channel order. Perfectly fine. Key thing we're interested in is that if I type in frame.shape, this is not 250 by 250 pixels. Right now it's 480 by 640 pixels by three channels. So we actually need this to be 250 by 250 by three. So what we can actually do is we can actually do a little bit of indexing or slicing to actually get the right shape. So say for example, I just did indexing. So say uh, I grabbed the first 250 by the first 250 by everything, you can see that we are now getting 250 by 250 by three. And so all I've done there is just some slicing or some array slicing. So if I actually go and plot this now, plot.im show, you can see I'm getting the top, what is that? Top right corner, top left corner. So in this case, I'm getting the top left-hand corner, but you can see that that's not actually accurately capturing my face. So it's a little bit of a pain there because this is going to suck when it comes to performing facial verification. So what we could actually do is we could actually tweak these numbers. So rather than starting from zero, which is effectively what this code is doing, let's say we started uh, a little bit further in. So we started from, what's a good, what did I actually end up using? So 120, and then we did 120 plus 250. And then for our x-axis, we did 200 and then 200 plus 250. So if we go and do that now, 
that is a little bit better so we're now at least getting somewhere closer to where our face actually is now when we actually go and collect our images we can effectively render that to the screen so we can see where we are inside of that position that's perfectly fine so let me actually explain what i've done there so what i've actually gone and done is some indexing or some slicing so this first value is going to tell us or it's actually going to determine where our pixels start on the y-axis and where they end so we're effectively starting at 120 pixels and we're by passing through our colon we're saying we're going to go from 120 pixels to 120 plus 250 pixels so this is basically specifying the range of values that we want from our image and we're doing exactly the same on the x-axis except here we're starting at 200 pixels and we're going to 200 to 200 plus 250 so it's starting at 200 and going to 450 pixels for our y-axis we're starting at 120 and we are going to what is that 370 pixels and then by passing through another comma and a colon we're effectively saying that we want all three channels if i pass through just uh zero we're only going to get one color channel if i pass through one we're going to get a different color channel and if i pass through two again we're going to get a different color channel there but if i pass through colon we're going to grab all three so it means we're going to retain the fact that we have a color image okay so what we now need to do is we now need to implement this logic inside of our image capture loop so what we had from up here so let's go on ahead and do this so we're effectively going to just grab do effectively this and paste this here so we're going to be taking that slice of our frame from our webcam and we're going to reset the variable so we're going to set frame equal to this sliced version so cut down frame to 250 by 250 pixels so now if we go and run our image capture loop we're only going to be grabbing 250 by 250 pixels so if i go and run that you can see that that's effectively doing this. So when, when we actually go and collect images, I'll probably bring my seat a little bit further down and ensure my head is actually inside of that frame. But you can see that that is going to be replicating what we've got from our labeled faces in the wild data set a little bit more accurately than if we just went and grabbed 640 by, what is it? 480 by 640. Cool. All right, so that's effectively giving us our 250 by 250 pixels. What do we need to do now? So we actually now need to write out some images or actually save some images. So again, I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard and close that down. Okay, so what do we need to do? So we now need to collect our anchors and positives. So I'm just going to add two additional comments. Collect anchors, collect positives. And so we're going to use this logic that we had down here. So our breaking logic to actually go and collect our anchors and our positives. So I'm actually going to copy this and paste it here and paste it here. And what we want to do is we want to trigger our anchor collection when we hit A on our keyboard. So I'm actually going to change the value inside of our ORD function from Q to A. So this basically means that it's going to wait a millisecond and if we actually hit a within that millisecond it's going to collect an anchor image and we're going to do the same for our positives but rather than hitting q we're going to hit p so when we hit a on our keyboard it's going to collect an anchor and when we hit p on our keyboard it's going to collect a positive image now by stacking these together it does mean that there is going to be a little bit of a lag but instead of implementing a ton of logic i just figured this should be fine we can effectively work around this okay so what are we doing now so we're going to collect our anchors and our positives so what we now need to do is we now need to implement some logic to actually grab our frame and save it to our positives and anchor folders now before we actually do that i'm actually going to import a library called uuid so the uuid library is actually going to make it a little bit easier to actually go on ahead and let's actually ensure that we don't have a screw function so i'm just going to write pass there and pass there for now until we actually go and implement that logic so we're going to grab uuid and this is going to ensure that we're able to create unique names for each one of our images so in order to import uuid so we're going to import the uuid library to generate unique 
image names. Uh, and so import UUID. Cool, so that's UUID now imported. So I've written import UUID. And UUID stands for Uniform Unique Identifier or Unique Uniform, something like that. So what is it? UUID, question mark, question mark. Nope, lowercase. Oh, it's universally unique identifiers. There you go. So it basically gives you a specific pattern to generate a unique identifier. Now, in order to use it, there's a few different methods. So if I type in UUID dot, there are a bunch of different formats that you can have. So it can be UUID 1, UUID 3, UUID 4, or UUID 5. So we're just going to use UUID 1. So if I type in UUID 1, you can see that it is generating this unique identifier there. So we are effectively going to be using that to generate our unique image name. So we're just going to implement that there. So let's go on ahead and do that. And we'll take a step back and take a look at what we wrote. Okay, so that is, oh, we haven't actually finished that. It's cv2.im. Right, let's finish that. Okay, that is us done. So what we've effectively gone and done is we've added two additional lines of code there. So I've written, first up, what we're actually doing is we're creating the unique name. Create the unique file path. And then we're actually going on ahead and writing out our image. So write out, what is it? Anchor image. Okay, so let's take a look at what we wrote. So first up, I've created a variable called image name. So IMG name, and I've set that equal to os.path.join. And then we've gone and passed through our anchor path because we're going to store our anchor images inside of our anchor path. And then we're just creating a unique name or a unique name for our file. So if I go and copy that, you can see that we're just appending our unique identifier to .jpg. So this effectively means that when we go and do this multiple times, we're going to be creating unique identifiers each time. Is that actually, yeah, it is changing. So you can see that there. And then by wrapping it in os.path.join, we're effectively going to be creating a full file path. File path. So os.path.join, if I pass through a and c path, comma, and then this unique file name, this is effectively going to be storing our images inside of the data folder, inside of the anchor folder, and then it's going to be naming it that there. And in order to actually go and write out our image, I've written cv2.imwrite, and we're passing through our image name, which is what we just created up here. And we're passing through our cut down 250 by 250 pixel frame. Cool. So that is that now done. Now, what we can also do is just copy this over here and paste it under our positives. And all we need to do is change the anchor path to the positive path because we're going to be storing them inside of different folders. So that is effectively that there now done. Okay, I think we're good. So if we actually go and run this, we should be able to hit A on our keyboard to collect anchor images and P on our keyboard to collect positive images. So if I go and let's actually do this side by side so we can actually see our folders. So if I go into D drive and then YouTube and then face ID, uh, and then data and then anchor. So we're first up going to collect our anchor images. So if I actually go and run this code here now. Yep. Okay. So that's, let's run it. Cool. All right. So we've got our image of ourself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down the green screen. And let's actually test this out. So I'm just going to get my head inside the frame, move the mic out. If you can still hear me, fingers crossed. All right, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to hit A on our keyboard to collect an anchor. So if I hit A, make sure we're clicked into it. All right, so you can see that that is collecting our images. Pretty cool, right? So if we keep hitting A, we should be able to collect a bunch more. I'm just going to move my head around. I'm just holding down A. All right, that looks like we've got 
400 images there. That should be more than enough. So you can see 414 down there. So we've got plenty. Just take a look at a different view. All right, so we've got a ton of images. Let's get somewhere we're a little closer as well. So if I go in a little bit closer. Cool. All right, so that's 489 images that we've collected. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump into the positive folder and let's collect some positives. So again, hit P on our keyboard. This is going to start collecting positive images. I'm just going to move my head around as I'm collecting. Now it is going to take a little bit longer to collect our positive images because we've got that one millisecond break. Probably speed this up in editing, but that's pretty cool. So you can see that we are effectively collecting images. So we want around about 300 for each. That's what we'll use for training. Alrighty, that should be enough. So we've got, what, 332 positives now collected. Okay, so what we've gone and done there is if we go into our data folder, into our anchor, we've got a bunch of anchor images collected. And remember, we're going to have two streams when it comes to building our model. We're going to have the anchor image that we pass through, and we're also going to have the positive image or the negative image down here. So we're effectively going to be verifying whether or not our anchor images matches the negative or matches the positive. So it should output a one if it is positive. So if it matches the positive and it should output a zero if our anchor is being verified against a negative image. Okay, so we've got our anchor images. We've got our positive images. And again, these have been both collected via our webcam. And if we go, we've got our negative images as well. Pretty cool, right? So if we go and hit Q now on our keyboard, should hopefully close. There we go. All right. So that is our data all collected. So we've gone and done a bunch of stuff. So that's effectively this entire tutorial now done. So, or at least part two. So what we've gone and done is we first up went and collected our images from the labeled faces in the wild data set. And again, I'll link to that in the description below. We moved those into the negative folder and then we went and collected a bunch of images using our webcam and we collected both our anchor and our positive. So this is actually doing our positive. Cool. So that is now done. So again, as per usual, all this code is going to be available inside of the description below via GitHub. But on that note, that about wraps it up. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe, and tick that bell. And if you have any questions, comments, or queries, do let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.